Well, plus a good afternoon, my fellow politicos out there. Um, I did have the U.S. House video slated to be released on Friday evening. However, because of technical difficulties and a um, pretty demanding work schedule over the weekend, I uh, was not able to put it out, um, and the audio on it was just really awful. Um, and I tried to do, you know, I tried to tweak some things today so you can actually look at the map instead of me talking when I do my projections. But instead, I'm, I'm going to have to ask you to go to 270 to win.com, go to the U.S. House Battleground map, make sure it's Battleground, and it has the 29 toss up districts on it, and follow along with me. Um, of course, if you want to stay here and see my pretty face and hair, then more power to you also okay so we're gonna get started in my home district north carolina 13th congressional district uh, this was a district that mitt romney won by seven points in 2012 and donald trump increased that up to pl a plus 10 for the republicans um, this district is more of Ted Buds, the Republican incumbent, uh, his race to lose rather than Kathy Manon's race to win. Um, I will say the campaign ads uh, by Ted Bud have been not so great. Um, he's done a really good job of defining who Kathy Manon is, but yet he has done a pretty poor job of defining who Ted Bud is. Um, he had an ad of a factory owner saying that our strong economy works because of Ted Budd and the Trump tax cuts. That's all fine and good, but if you really want to hammer this point home, you should have had a factory worker or somebody like me who works in retail and actually got a raise, a very good raise because of the Trump tax cuts, because a lot of independent voters and just a lot of your you know your average not very political but still vote on election day yeah, they see a lot of business owners and factory workers as fat cats and that is not true but again that's that perception out there in the society um kathy manon's ads on the other hand have been very good um she has these this one ad where she was talking with construction workers, conversation with Kathy, and that sort of thing. Talking about her story about her daughter who had cancer and her fight with the health insurance companies. Um, now, generally, Ted, I would pick Ted Budd to win. He's a very good, reliable, conservative Republican. His uh, conservative review scores are in the very high 90s, almost 100%. However, a couple weeks ago, his campaign released an ad accusing Kathy Manon of um, taking taxpayer dollars to build a parking garage and a hotel in downtown Greensboro. Um, and the ad was found to be false by the nonpartisan non organization known as PolitiFact. And the uh politifact ruling was that um kathy mann's husband did work on the project so mann was kind of affiliated with the project but any profits from that project are going to be donated to the community foundation of greater greensboro for economic development workforce development and helping the less fortunate and homeless people um in the greater greensboro area so uh ted budd really um you know attacked greensboro as well as the community and the community organization and really that is a big no-no when you're running for congress you need to really focus on national issues now it's okay if you want to focus on a national issue that has a local baron in the community but this was just very very half-ass on his part um unfortunately he awoke in a hornet's nest uh in this district which is the uh the central downtown area of greensboro is very heavily uh democratic and 
he might be able to run up the score in Davison and County and down in uh, Advance and some of these other little small, very conservative areas. But uh, un- unfortunately, uh, this ad really invigorated the Greensboro community. And that is why I am going to pick Kathy Manning to win this race. It's going to be very close. It might be right around a thousand votes, but I think that she is going to win this race um, mainly because of the the ad that Ted Budd, uh, you know, again decided to go after a local issue that really he he knows very little about and just a, really just a horrible error in judgment for his campaign. Okay, so now let's go down. <laughs> Let's go down the all the I-85 corridor to the 9th district of North Carolina. This one is where we have Mark Harris, the um, former pastor of First Baptist Church in Charlotte. He won. He defeated uh, what's his name, uh, Robert Pittenger, in the primary back in May. So this is essentially an open seat versus Dan McCready, who is very unknown, but he is a Marine veteran, small business owner. This district was a Republican hold. Mitt Romney won it by 12 points, and so did Donald Trump. The polling for this race have been all over the place. They've had we've had McCready up by seven, then Harris up by five, and then McCready up by four. And the latest one has Harris up by one. I think at the end of the day, being North Carolina is still, and hopefully for as long as I'm alive, a Bible Belt state. At the end of the day, people are going to vote for the Baptist minister over the small business owner, Democrat. Um, so Harris should win this race, and it should be by about a five to seven point margin. If it is under, say, if Harris only wins this race by three, that very well could mean that the Republicans are struggling in other areas. And this race is on my official races to watch bellwether list uh, for the republicans so now let's go down to south florida uh the very uh tip tip southern tip of south florida the 26th district of florida uh, we have carlos corbello the republican incumbent going up against debbie powell um Generally, the polls have been very close. Curbella up by three, then up by one. The latest one had Powell up by one. Uh, it's interesting to note this is a pretty heavily Democratic district. Obama won this um, district by 12 points, and Clinton increased that by to 16, plus 16 for the Dems two years ago. Um the big reason why Mrs. Powell is not running away with this thing, though, is that Curbelo has a reputation in Congress of being a very moderate and a very establishment Republican. Um, I think based on the fact that Curbelo is such a good candidate for this particular district, he should be able to hold his seat for at least another two years. Um, okay. So now let's go to the 15th District of Florida. This is up on the I-4 corridor between Tampa and Orlando. Mainly the, the Lakeland area is, is, is the majority of this, this, this particular district. It is an open seat between the Republican Ross Spano and Kristen Carlson, the Democrat. Um, there hasn't been a lot of polling in this race, which is kind of hard to believe because it's right on the I-4 corridor. Uh, but back on October 19th, this was a tied race, and this district um, was lean Republican, but it's getting more and more red. Mitt Romney won this district by six points, and then Trump is a plus 10. Um, this is a seat you would think the Republicans would be able to win. I do not know why there's only one poll that shows it's tied. But again, this race is on my bellwether list. Republicans need to do well here. They need to, uh, they should at least win this race by five to seven points. If they do not, again, the Republicans are going to be in trouble tomorrow night. Okay. 
the second district of Virginia, the Virginia Beach and the Eastern Shore of Virginia area. We have Scott Taylor, the Republican incumbent, versus Elaine Lutere, uh, the Democrat. Uh, uh, Romney was plus two, and then Trump was plus three here. Um, Scott Taylor has led in pretty much all the polls. Um, not a comfortable lead by any stretch, but it's usually been between a plus three and a plus seven. Um, which, and this is also despite the fact that the current governor of Virginia, a Democrat by the name of Ralph Northam, is from the eastern shore of Virginia, and you would think would be able to have some pull towards the Democrats in this district, but Scott Taylor, um, as was highlighted at a leadership institute. Um, seminar I went to a couple months ago in Raleigh that talked about effective campaigns. Um, Scott Taylor is the poster child of effective campaigns. He is a very good social media presence, really reaches a lot of college kids in the Virginia Beach area. So again, uh, this should be his race to win, and I think he's going to do just that. Okay, um, Vir Virginia 7th, um, Dave Bratt versus Ab Abigail Spannenberger. Um, this race, um, the district, I don't know why I don't have it in my notes, but I remember from my memory. Uh, Trump, uh, excuse me, Romney won this district by about 10 points, and then Trump was only a plus 4 or 5, I believe. But Dave Bratt is similar to Ted Budd. He's a very good solid conservative and uh but unlike ted budd he has not shot himself in the foot uh with a um controversial campaign ad and i was in the richmond area about two or three years ago and saw a banner um i was driving up i-295 the richmond beltway there and basically said thank you dave bratt for being an effective member of congress for us so while i think the richmond suburbs are getting are blue and are getting bluer and are becoming much more of a problem are going to be a problem for republicans in the next few election cycles I think Dave Brad is going to hold on to this seat for another term, but um, it's going to be a close margin. It, if it's more than three or five points, it means the Republicans are having a really good, really, really good night. Um, but less than five means that, um, again, the, the Richmond suburbs really starting to trend Democratic here. But for Bratt, this district does go all the way down the North Carolina line, goes through some very heavily Republican and rural areas, too. New Jersey, 3rd District, Tom MacArthur, uh, the Republican incumbent versus Andrew Kim, the Asian Democrat. Uh, this district, 11-point uh, swing for the Republicans from 2012 to 2016. Poland has been really neck and neck. Uh, MacArthur up by two, and then Kim up by two, and then back to MacArthur by one. When he, it was eleven to point, it was eleven point swing for the Republicans two years ago. I think that is a good positive trend for the GOP, and they should hold this seat. Okay, New Jersey seventh district, Leonard Lance, Republican incumbent versus Tom Malinowski. Mitt Romney won, was a plus six, and then Clinton was a plus one, a seven-point swing for the Dems. Uh, Malinowski has been leading in, the, in all the polls that have been taken in this race. It's been anywhere from a plus three to a plus eight, and that plus eight was taken just last week. Malinowski, I think he has this race in the bag, and this is going to be a pickup for the Dems tomorrow evening. Pennsylvania 1st District, Brian Fitzpatrick versus Scott Wallace. This has been a um, Democrat leaning district since 2012. Obama plus two and Clinton plus two. Um, despite that, Wallace has never been leading in the polls here. It's been Fitzpatrick by four and Fitzpatrick by one. This one, again, should be another hold for the Republicans. 
Okay, New York 19th, John Faso versus Antonio Delgado, the Democrat. Okay, this district swung 13 points for the Republicans two years ago. However, um, Mr. Mr. Delgado has been leading in all the polls, and I think the last poll taken was just over the weekend. Delgado is up by five. Any of these polls, once they get up plus five for a particular candidate, you can start to say that district looks like it's going to go for that. They're the one up by five. This one, the Democrats up by five. Again, we have a pickup for the Democrats here in New York's 19th district. Another district in New York that is a Republican district is the 22nd Congressional District. Uh, Claudia Tenney, the Republican incumbent, is going up against Anthony Brindesi. Um, the polls, Brindesi had a very slight lead in most of October, plus one, plus two, well within the margin of error, though. And then the latest poll release just yesterday had Tenney Holden, Nursen, plus one in the polls. So this one should, um, I think Tenney should pull it out. This was another, like, I don't have the number for some reason, but it was at least a 10-point swing for the Republicans from Romney, from Obama to Trump in the uh, presidential election two years ago. Okay, Maine. Bruce Polk won the Republican incumbent versus Jared Golden, the Democrat. 19-point swing for the Republicans here from 2012 to 2016. This race, though, has either been tied or Golden, the Democrat, has plus one. I think at the end of the day, plus 19 is hard to ignore uh, in, in a four-year time period. I, I think Mr. Polk is going to pull this one out. So hold for the republicans there in maine second district ohio 12th district uh balderson versus o'connor balderson the republican this is a a rematch of the special election that was just held in august not a lot of polling data here since that election took place but i think again pro-trump area Plus, I mean, Balderson just got elected in August. I mean, <laughs> could very, very, you know, when somebody's been there for three months, I mean, really, they can't really accomplish much, but they also really can't shoot themselves in the foot either. This one should go to the Republicans. Now we have another bellwether district, Kentucky, believe it or not. Uh, the 6th District of Kentucky, okay, Andy Barr, the Republican, versus Amy McGrath, the Democrat. Uh, this district, uh, plus 14 for Romney, and then Trump uh, increased that to a plus 15 for Republicans. Um, but unfortunately, this race, uh, a poll release yesterday shows, believe it or not, it's tied. Yeah, hard to believe. Um... This, again, should be one that the Republicans, you would think, would be up comfortably. The fact that it says it's tied, I'm going to say, yeah, this one bears watching on election night. Uh, if if Andy Barr gets defeated, uh, yeah, that's going to be un desastre for the Republicans. Oh, boy, I can't even imagine that. Uh, okay. But I think Andy Barr is going to pull this one out. Okay. Michigan's 8th District, Mike Bishop, the Republican, versus Elissa Slotkin, the Democrat. Um, the poll, poll in, in mid-October showed Bishop was up by 3 to 6 points. But then there was one release yesterday that has me a little worried here. A Slotkin up by 7. But still, that is only one poll, and... You know, that's quite a swing from just two weeks ago. And um, haven't heard anything about controversial from Mike Bishop's campaign. Plus, um, Trump was able to double Romney's margin here um, in the 2016 election. So I think, yeah, this is going to be a hold for Mike Bishop, the Republican. 
Let's go now to Illinois 14th District in the exurbs of Chicago. <laughs> yeah, the fact that this race is near Chicago, that should um, sound off alarm bells for the Republicans. Um, Randy Holtgren is a Republican incumbent, believe it or not, and he's going up against Lauren Underwood. Um, Mitt Romney won this district by 10, but Donald Trump only won by 4. It is definitely trending Demo uh, Democratic. Um, a poll in the first week of October had Holtgren up by four, but then the Democrat Underwood is now says plus six. That poll was released just yesterday. Uh, both these polls were done by New the New York Times and Siena University. Um, the fact it's in Illinois, it's in the northern Chicago uh, suburbs. Yeah, this one looks like a pickup for the Democrats. Um, Minnesota's first district, an open seat. Jim Hagedorn, the Republican, and versus Dan Freehand, the Democrat. Okay, Obama won the seat by one point in 2012. Donald Trump came along and he really flipped this district by one. 15 points Trump won here and yet the polls well there's only one poll that was done about two weeks ago the Democrat is up by two points here but still 16 point swing for the, for the Republicans here in 2016 this one should go and I, I predict it's going to go for the Republicans okay Iowa's 3rd District David Young the Republican versus Cindy Axne no relation to Acne or Acme <laughs> okay this was an 8 point swing for the Republicans from 2012 to 2016 um there's been a couple polls released in the last 10 days. Axne, the Democrat, up by one and then up by two. Still, though, a 10-point swing. Is, yeah, there's a 10 to 8 to 10-point swing, though, from Obama to Trump. Again, this one should be Republican hold. Kansas, 2nd District, open seat between Steve Watkins, the Republican, and Paul Davis, the Democrat. Okay, Romney was plus 13 here, and then Trump was plus 18. Um, uh, two polls last week. One had Watkins up by 7, which is good for the Republicans, but then Davis up by 4, which is good news for the Democrats. Yeah, but still, at the end of the day, it's Kansas. Trump won this district by 18 points. I think, yeah, that those numbers are very favorable for the Republicans. It should be another hold by the GOP. New Mexico, the second district of New Mexico. This is uh, an open seat because Steve Pierce was the congressman here. He now has gone to run for um, the governorship of New Mexico. Um, Yvette Harold, the Republican versus Torres Small, the Democrat, a battle of two ladies. Cat fight alert. Ooh. <laughs> now, uh, Mitt Romney plus seven, Trump plus ten. All the polling has the Republican Harrell up by one to five points. Again, this seat should stay in the GOP column. Now, Utah, fourth district. Mia Love, the Republican incumbent versus Ben McAdams. Mitt Romney won here. Bigly in 2012. He was plus 37. Donald Trump won this district too, but it was only by seven points. Okay. And the polls here, McAdams up by anywhere from two to seven points. That is very good news for the Democrats. Um, and another thing too is uh, keep in mind that Mila Love ran for this seat for the first time in 2012 when Mitt Romney was the Republican nominee for president. Mia Love lost this seat in 2012 even though Mitt Romney won the state of Utah by a significant margin. Okay, this time around, Mitt Romney is running for the U.S. Senate seat um, being vacated by Orrin Hatch. Um, however, uh, this, you know, uh, Mia Love couldn't couldn't win the seat when Romney won the presidency in Utah, and now 
you know, Mitt Romney's probably going to win the U.S. Senate seat and Mia Love probably going to lose. So there's a lot of split ticket voters here. Um, in other words, you know, Mitt, Mitt Romney just uh, can't have Mitt Romney on the ballot in Utah, just cannot save Mia Love here. Another thing, too, um, she had a lot of high hopes for Mia Love, but she turned out to be a rhino. So that's another thing working against her here. So, yeah, this is going to be a pickup, believe it or not, in Utah for the Democrats. Wow. Yeah. Okay, now let's go up to Washington, the evergreen state, a.k.a. the ever-left state. Yeah, I can say that because the Republicans lost the state Senate here two years ago. This used to be a fairly purpley state, and it's like the only blue state that has no state income tax, believe it or not. <laughs> but uh, we have an open con congressional seat in the 8th District between Dino Rossi, the Republican, and Kim Shire, the Democrat. Um, Obama was plus two here, and then Clinton was plus three. Not a whole lot of change from 2012 to 2016. Um, uh, two polls have been done that show Shire plus one, Shire plus three. There is one done that showed Dino Ross. He was up by 10 points. But I looked at the polling company, and it's done by a company I've never heard of called L.A. Polling Company. I mean, I've heard of John Elway, the former Broncos Hall of Fame quarterback, but never heard of Elway Pollen Company. So I'm going to throw that one out and just say this is going to be a pickup for the Democrats. Okay. California, the 10th district, Jeff Denham, a Republican incumbent versus Josh Harder, a.k.a. Tartar, <laughs> Tartar Sauce, uh, Democrat. Okay. Obama was plus four, and then this one went slight, very slightly towards Trump. Clinton plus three. Harder has been up in the polls, plus two, plus five, but this is one where, again, um, Obama lost voters. The Democrats actually lost voters here in 2016. Jeff Dunham, Republican, the power incumbency is going to rear its ugly head for the Democrats here. This one's going to be a hold for the GOP. District 25 in California, Stephen Knight versus Katie Hill, the Democrat. Um, Romney was plus two here in 2012. Clinton plus seven in 2016. Um, despite that nine point shift, Stephen Knight has consistently been in the lead here, anywhere from plus two to plus four. This one should stay in the Republican column. California's 39th district, Young Kim, not related to Little Kim, as far as I know, um, versus Gil Cicernos, the Democrat. Romney won the seat by four points in 2012, and then the Democrats had a 15-point swing over to Clinton, Clinton plus nine. Uh, two polls have been done, Cicernos up by only one point, which is a little hard to believe, but still, when you have a 15-point swing from 2012 to 2016 for the Democrats, this one... <laughs> I, I think the National Democratic Party is probably thinking that Cicernos is going to underperform here, but he's still going to win, and this will be a pickup in the Dem column. 45th District of California, Mimi Walters, not related to Mimi Rogers, the Republican incumbent, versus Katie Porter. Um, Romney was plus eight, and then this district swung by 13 points to Clinton plus five. All of the polling data says Porter plus two, Porter plus seven. Porter has been in the lead here. This smells and looks like a Democratic pickup here. And the last district of California that we're going to cover, thankfully, the 48th district of California between Dana Rohrbacher, the Republican, and versus Harley Rhoda. The Dem. Romney plus 12. Clinton plus 2. 
The polls uh, been all over the place. Tied. Road to plus one. Road to plus two. Rohrbacher was the latest one. Plus two for him. Still, though, I think this is going to be a damn pickup. 14 point swing in four years. Yeah, looks that way. Okay. Two districts in Texas we have to cover, and then I have one surprise district, and then we're done. Okay. The 7th District of Texas, John Culberson, the Republican incumbent, versus Lizzie Fletcher, a.k.a. Lizzie McGuire. <laughs> um, Mitt Romney won by 21 points. And then this uh, swung by 22 points over into the Clinton column. Uh, despite that, people like John Culberson, apparently. He's been up in all the polls, plus one, plus three, again, within the margin of error. But still, this should be securely in the GOP column. 32nd District of Texas. This is in the Dallas suburbs. The other one was in the... Um, Houston suburbs. And remember also Donald Trump had a huge rally here in Houston. Huge turnout. A lot of people had to be uh, turned away because the place was filled to capacity. So that is another factor working in Culberson's favor. Okay. 32nd District of Texas. Pete Sessions, Republican versus Colin Allred. Uh, the Dem. Okay. Romney won here by 16 points. Then Clinton was plus 2. 18 point swing for the Dems and this race believe it or not has not been heavily polled um Sessions was up by one back on the 24th of September but a poll yesterday was released that shows really bad news for the Republicans uh, all read up by four believe it or not um still though Pete Sessions, very strong incumbent. He's been in Congress since, I believe, the early 2000s. Former chairman of the uh, National Republican Congressional Committee. So you know that they're pouring tons of money in this district trying to save Pete Sessions. He's also the House Rules Chairman. So if the Dems pick up this seat, that's going to be a huge seismic shift in... Um, the house for sure um still though you have an incumbent has been around for 15 years house rules committee former nrcc chairman people know who pete sessions is and name recognition really gets you a long way in a lot of these um congressional races so we're going to keep keep this as a republican hold but again this one definitely bears watching on Tuesday night. Okay, now I have one surprise for you. Minnesota's 7th district, that is on the western side of the state. This district is currently rep represented by Democrat Colin Peterson. However, he's been there a while. Uh, he's been congressman since I've been in preschool, <laughs> 91. Um, this is the most Republican district that's been represented by a Democrat. It's an R plus 12 on the Cook Partisan Index, which is very neat, by the way. Mr. Mr. Peterson's uh, ACU score is only in the 20s. Um, his progressive score is in the 50s, so that would lead you to believe, yeah, not a conservative Democrat by any stretch. Um, and I also look at a race that might really help this for help this as a republican pickup is um the open senate seat between the lieutenant governor who's a dem uh versus the republican that's that has tightened in the polls now um so this one's going to be a pickup for the republicans and this is going to be a huge pickup because after all those tw all those 30 seats i just covered for you we have the Republicans holding on very slightly by just one seat. So the new makeup that I project is going to be 218 seats for the Republicans and 217 seats for the Democrats. Okay, 
that is all now. And as always, thank you for watching. I am the conservative pelican. Bye-bye. Oh, and make sure you vote, by the way, if you haven't done so already. Vote Republican. Bye-bye.